In this video, we'll take a look at how to organize our project folders and go over some tips for naming our documents and files. You can start by clicking on the link below to view the infographic on the screen and follow along before we get into creating our own folder structure and organizing our files. Along the bottom of the graphic, you will see some common file types that we will become familiar with this semester. Some of these files are known as native design files, such as .ai, which are created with Adobe Illustrator, .psd, which are Photoshop files, and .indd, which are InDesign files. These file types are native to their applications. Another common file type that you will use this term is known as a zip file. You will be asked to create .zip files if it is necessary to submit multiple files into a single compressed file for an assignment submission. You will also come across these files when downloading lesson files from your course. Some others are PDFs, which you will use to save out your final design documents, and the remaining .html, .css, and .js files are used to create web pages. You will also use and export a series of image files for print and web projects, such as JPEG, PNG, GIF, SVG, and so on. During your design courses, you will be instructed on when and how to use and create these specific file types. In addition, there are some file naming structures that you should take note of below. When starting out, try to name your files using lowercase characters. Use hyphens or underscores to separate words, but do not use spaces in between your file or folder names. When your files and folders are saved to your computer, using capital letters and or spaces won't be an issue. However, when you start to produce web pages, files will need to adhere to these naming conventions so that the file's name path will not be broken. So now that we've gone through some basic file naming conventions, I'll go through how to organize your files and folders for project management. Starting along the left-hand side, we have our local hard drive. I would suggest purchasing an external solid state hard drive to back up and archive your files. If you're on a Mac, utilize the time machine feature, which will automatically create an archive of your computer's hard drive and copy its contents to your external drive. Next, the way that I've labeled these folders can be suited for client work as well as your coursework. I would suggest creating a folder in your main documents folder on your computer's hard drive. Within that folder, create your program folder and then start to add course folders, which would be akin to the client folder. Inside of your course folder, you can create folders for each project or weekly lessons. For now in this video, I'll focus on project folders. So during the program, you will produce both projects for print and for screens or web. For print projects, I have a folder called documents, and this is where I would place things like my assignment brief. If this were a client project, I would save my creative brief in this folder along with contracts, invoices, and possibly proposals. Next, I would create a source folder, which contains all of my raw files that are necessary for the project. So for example, you might have a Word document with a copy that needs to go on a poster art design or web page. You might receive raw, unedited photographs, a company logo, or your initial sketches and ideas for a given project. The next folder would be for your native design files. This is where you would save your .ai files if you're creating any vector art, or your .indd files if you're creating a page layout project. Once your design is composed within a native application, you will need to save it out for print, which is usually saved as a PDF file. Your PDF file can be saved in your print folder so that you know where to find it later on down the road. For example, you might design a set of business cards for a client and reprint another set if they request more to be printed at a later date. Now we'll take a look at our web files and folder structure. It's really important to pay close attention to the structure and naming of your web files. If files or folders are in the wrong location, this may cause display issues or issues with broken hyperlinks and functionality. Your web folder might also be referred to as your root folder. This just means that it's your main home folder of your web page. Within the root folder, you will have your .html files. Inside of your root folder, you will also have a series of other folders, such as a folder for your .css file, which is responsible for styling your HTML pages, and a folder for your JavaScript or .js files, which might be responsible for animating elements within your web page. If you have any media that needs to be displayed on your web pages, create a folder for your optimized images, fonts, video files, and audio files. Other than image files, fonts, video, and audio can be embedded or linked to external websites such as Google Fonts, YouTube, or Spotify. However, if you wish to embed your own files and host them yourself, 
you should organize them accordingly. Now that we've gone through some basics of file and folder management, download and open up the print and web file type documents and complete the definition list for your own learning and notes. Get familiar with what each file type does and which applications they work with. After completing the file type definitions, organize your folders and come up with your own system for archiving your files and project folders. Create a backup of your folders and get into the habit of backing up your files every week or every month. Some other options you might have for backing up your files are using Google Drive or Dropbox. They both have free options but are limited in storage capacity. However, a few extra options for backing up your files doesn't hurt. So now let's take a look and see how we can create our own folder structure like the one in the infographic. First thing I'll do is right click and create a new folder. Now, depending on what program you're in, you can enter in your program name, such as graphic design, bachelor of design, or multimedia design. I'm just gonna enter in graphic design right now. And then I'll double click on the folder just to open that up. So now that I have my program folder, what I'll do is maybe start to create a course folder for every course that I have this semester. Or maybe you begin by creating a folder for each semester. So maybe you start with semester one. And then inside of that folder, you can start to put in your courses. Maybe you can enter in your course code for that as well. And now within the course, you could start to add assignment folders. So you can continue and add assignment one, two, and three. Or you might also want to add in things like your weekly notes. So week one through 14. Inside the assignment folder, now we can create a folder according to the infographic. So such as our documents folder. We can also create a source folder. We'll create our design folder. And our print folder. So now when we get files like our assignment briefs, we can put that in the documents. Anything that we need to create our project, we can put it in the source folder. Our native files, so any application that we're going to be creating our artwork in, whether that's Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, After Effects, etc., we could put that in our design folder. And then when we need to export our work as a PDF or a final production piece, we could put it in the print folder or maybe a final folder or export folder. Feel free to leave comments and questions below and like this video if you found it helpful. As usual, share it with others who might find it useful and I'll see you all in the next one.